the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Happy New Year to everybody joining us for the first time this 2021 calendar year. Thank you so much for getting involved as you guys do all the time. You email us at feedback at ami.ca and we read them all the time. You get in touch on Twitter at Double Tap Canada and you use that hashtag which is Ask Double Tap, which is all that we can ask of you. I am Marco Flalo, as always, joined every week by Stephen Scott. So happy to be here with you guys, especially this new year, this new calendar year, Stephen. I, I don't know. 2020 kind of behind us. I think everybody is hoping that 2020 stays behind us and that 2021 brings us some great, great positivity. Yeah, 2020 was just a, a terrible year, wasn't it? And to be honest, you know, we all hope that 2021 will be better. Let's let's just keep the positivity flowing and hope that's the case. I think for for one area in particular, 2021 is going to be really good, and that is our area, technology. This is this is the year I'm looking forward to for a whole host of reasons. I love starting a brand new year because you can look forward and say, okay, what was the year of 2020? What did that bring us in technological advancements? And there's lots of really cool stuff, but looking forward, you know, there's so many things to get excited about, whether that's widespread 5G connectivity across the world, whether that's more people getting internet access thanks to services like Skylink, perhaps you know autonomous vehicles. Maybe Apple Glass will show its face for the first time on our faces, oh, Stephen. Oh, fingers <laughs> crossed. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait for Apple Glass. You know, I rarely queue for anything, but I will queue for that. I'll get in line for Apple Glass. You, you, know what? you will not stop me. If there's one thing I can guarantee 2021 is going to be, it's going to be the year of not having to line up, not having to wait in the queue, because we have yeah, learned how true, to do yeah. all these things <laughs> online quite well. And, you know, thankfully, Apple have uh, moved up their, you know, wake up in the middle of the night to order an iPhone. And now you can do it at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is which is kind of fun. Uh, Stephen, this week we're talking all about 2021. We've got a special guest lined up. You know, between you and I, what do, what do you think 2021 is going to bring us in terms of tech and technology and consumer electronics? Is there something specific that stands out to you? Well, I think for me it is going to be the wearable devices. I think, you know, we've heard a lot over 2019 and 2020. This is the year of the wearable. And it never really materialized. We've seen the growth of 5G over 2020. I think in 21, we're likely to see the growth of wearable tech. Uh, maybe 5G will help and maybe be part of that. Uh, you know, we talk about Apple Glass, that would be amazing to see. Uh, I think I'd like to see a, a Pixel Watch at some point as well. I think that would be rather interesting uh, because, you know, that would take Google into that world. Remember, of course, last year they acquired Fitbit. So maybe we'll start to see some some rewards out of that. It's going to be an interesting year. I mean, 2020 has been uh, a terrible year for in a lot of ways, but like you say, 5G uh, has, has really moved on and that uh, rollout has happened, but it's all about the handsets now and you know delivering 5G in real terms. And of course, what will that mean for the future of connected technology around the home? How will it improve our connected technology in our home? I think also just one other point about 2020 I want to bring up, it was the growth of video conferencing platforms. I mean, it, they were just propelled into people's lives. Even those who didn't know what Zoom was, uh, you know, suddenly were get, were, that's all you heard about. And think about the, the exponential growth. That's going to continue into 21 as well. And again, that's where 5G and this interconnectivity is going to really matter. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. I was going to say working from home is going to evolve even farther. I think even, you know, with promising vaccines and the way we've gotten used to this work from home environment and the way companies have realized that, guess what, your workforce can be product productive, even though they're not physically there. That's going to mean that we're going to see a big impact on the real estate market, especially on the commercial side. But I think we're going to see a, a faster evolution, just as we did with the video conferencing solutions, with home technology solutions that make working from home easier. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the behind the scenes stuff, the infrastructure side of things, you yeah. know, getting gigabit Ethernet and internet to everybody's home so that we can do things a lot faster. And that's going to lead obviously into, you know, better entertainment. We're going to see the movie industry change this year. I think we're going to see a lot of things delivered streaming first before you go to a theater, because even if a vaccine is released and there is something that is extremely positive, it's going to take a long time 
for that to be distributed to the masses. And I think people are still going to be wary of, of going into big places with crowds. So I think we're going to see that evolution as well. But you know what's better, Stephen, is that you and I can guess all we want, but we've got someone lined up who has a crystal ball. Okay, not a real crystal ball. Let's call it the tech crystal ball. And he's going to lead us into some really, really <laughs> cool things and talk about this very topic, which is what is 2021 going to bring us? What does the future have for us? So let's take a quick break. This is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Marco Flalo. When we come back, we're going to welcome our guest and we're going to look down that crystal ball and hopefully find all the answers to our dreams on Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being involved. And this is a question, or this is a topic I think you guys are going to want to get involved in. So don't forget that email address if I, you know, don't repeat it enough times on a show. Feedback at AMI.ca, or you can reach us on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada, and use that hashtag, Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott. We're looking into our crystal ball this week and discussing what's going to be on the top tech trends for 2021. And Stephen, you're standing by with a very special guest, are you not? That's right, Mark. I'm joined by a very special guest this week. I've got uh, Robin Spinks with me. He is the Senior Innovation Manager at RNIB. That's the Royal National Institute of Blind People in the UK. Uh, good to have you here and a happy 2021, Robin. And to you, Stephen. It's great to be with you. And this week, we really want to focus on what the future will be. Uh, you know, as we start this new year, I think it's really important for us to think about what technology will be like as we head into 2022. Uh, you know, because this is what we like to do at the start of a new year, isn't it? Look ahead to the next one. And I think a lot of people are probably thinking at the beginning of 2020, they were certainly not thinking they'd be doing that so quickly <laughs> in 2020, uh, hoping for, for 21 to come along. Uh, so, you know, today I want to talk to you about uh, what, we think will be the future of technology, where it will all go this year. And I want to start with something that I think we've talked about a lot between you and I, and also on this show and on the radio show as well, and that's 5G. Now, people mm -hmm. might be surprised that I say 5G off the bat here because they'll say, well, hang on, Stephen, that was a very 2020 thing to talk about. But actually, what's happened in 2020 is the technology that creates and makes 5G happen has come along. but what we saw at the end of 2020 was the handsets start to come to market. So is this now the year for 5G? I think you'll see a big 5G adoption over the coming couple of years, to be honest, Stephen. So what we're seeing now that's really interesting is instead of 5G being the preserve of your Samsung S20 Ultras and you know, your top end flagship handsets, you're starting to see manufacturers essentially working. And it's in part response to carrier pressure in the US and elsewhere, where we've got what we would call almost premium mid-range handsets coming on stream. So these would be handsets that in the UK might be, you know, 350 to 400 pounds. They're not in that top end category, but they're coming with a less powerful uh, chip. So not a top end chip, but more of a mid tier one and with 5G support. So what we're likely to see is many, many more handsets coming on stream this year that have 5G. Um, and as a result, we'll see the networks that people are, are tapping into developing and offering more capability. It's interesting you say that because we did see a flurry of these new devices, these uh, sub $1,000 devices come in uh, over the course of 2020, and most notably the Pixel 5, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. Uh, you know, I still love the Fan Edition part of that. Um, it's great, but isn't it? it is, uh, you know, and it's great to see these devices come along that are cheaper. Is is that a response to the age of, of COVID or is that just a general response to people's buying trends uh, over the past few I years? Yeah, I think it's a number of things. I think COVID undoubtedly plays its part, as you know, many people have seen their incomes reduced or indeed, you know, drastically reduced where they've lost employment and so on. So, you know, consumers want more affordable devices, and that's good news for everyone who wants to buy a phone. So there's a lot of pressure from consumers and from networks to manufacturers to produce more affordable devices because 
you know, not many people really have got the cash to buy a 1,000 to 1,500 pound device. That's a huge investment, even if you stagger it over a couple of years. But if you're able to make the purchase price of that device, you know, 400, 500, maybe even 600 dollars or pounds, you've got a more affordable proposition and you'll encompass a much greater number of potential buyers. Now, one of the benefits of 5G, of course, is uh, what it can do. Now, we're hearing a lot about what it can do for phones and, you know, the benefits, for example, of uh, low latency when it comes to hitting that play button on your favourite mm -hmm. Netflix film on the, on the commute to work. But, you know, it has actually a much bigger purpose and something it will serve well are autonomous cars. Now, we've seen again developments in that space over the past year, not much in terms of anything public. We're seeing a lot of private testing going on, not a huge amount on the roads. Is that likely to change this year? I think we'll see that intensify. You know, um, Britain's first autonomous busway was due to get underway during late 2021. Um, we'll see that this year. Um, so I think we'll start to see public projects where there's mass transportation provided by means of an autonomous vehicle. We're seeing more developments from individual manufacturers in terms of systems like ProPilot that Nissan have on their LEAF. The availability of these features is increasing and also customers are expecting them on cars, you know, more and more. It's not just a top end of the range feature anymore. People expect them to now be available across the range. And we'll also see more changes in terms of policy shifts with individual states and countries, you know, allowing more autonomous vehicles to use the roads. Now, one of the things that autonomous vehicles need in order to operate is a technology called LiDAR. Um, mm. Let's talk a bit about that. What is LiDAR and how will it not only benefit cars, but also us as well? So LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. And it's essentially a technology that allows you to do mapping and positioning um, in a very accurate way. So um, a really good example of that is the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. They're uh, two handsets that are on the market right now that use a LiDAR scanner. And what that does is it actually enables uh, augmented reality um, applications to work better but it also allows things like portrait photographs to be taken at nighttime, where you need to blur the background between a subject and the background. That can be done much more effectively using a LiDAR scanner, but it's also in iOS 14.2 in accessibility, there's a feature called people detection. And cleverly, what Apple has done here is they've used the LiDAR scanner to be able to tell you how far away you are from a another human being or maybe a number of other human beings if you're in a you know a social situation and you need to think about social distancing you can do that in an accessible way as a voiceover user and it will tell you how far away someone is from from where you are so i'm super excited about lidar and the potential to use it for all sorts of applications stay with us robin i've got so much more to ask you about in particular around artificial intelligence and how that is going to improve over 2021. And also I want to get your top tech prediction for this year as well. Looking forward to hearing all about that. Robin Spinks, Senior Innovation Manager at RNIB in the UK with us this week. Uh, Mark, it is incredible, isn't it? The, the technology that is going to be coming out that's already here, but will be developing further into 2021. That's right, Stephen. Lots of great innovations on the way. I know I'm really looking forward to Robin's predictions for new tech this year too, and that is still to come after we take a quick break. This is Double Tap TV, and we'll be back in just a moment. Stick around. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being here every single week. Of course, if you want to get involved, feedback at ami.ca and on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott by my side every week, and I'm going to hand it back to you, Stephen, and your special guest this week. Yeah, let's dive right back in uh, with Robin Spinks from RNIB in the UK. Uh, that's the Royal National Institute of blind people. Robin is the uh, senior innovation manager there and uh, he's here to tell us this week about what tech we can expect in 2021. Uh, I want to dive right into a topic that I must admit I was really surprised when we 
we talked about this in, in planning for this show, Robin, uh, batteries. How will batteries get better in 2021? Well, you know, if you think about the kind of batteries that are in your smartphone or tablet or laptop or pretty much any device that you might have at your disposal, the technology that's in them has been relatively constant for quite a number of years now. So um, for quite a few years, people will have had lithium ion batteries in their devices. And what we're likely to see um, in the very near future are what we call solid state batteries, where the chemistry of the battery is really quite different and the way that the cells are stacked together is such that it allows people to have much uh, faster charging times. But crucially for, for all of us, batteries that last a good bit longer usually want good battery life. Um, so uh, a lot of people will warmly welcome that development, I think. It's not a sexy topic, but at the same token, it's a very important area because without it, well, nothing works when you're outside the house. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, let's, let's talk about artificial intelligence because we've seen huge strides forward, in particular with Amazon Echo, Google Home or Nest, as it now is. Um, you know, we're seeing huge strides with making the voice more human and making the interactions more natural. Um, is that something, again, that you, you think will develop further into 2021, or is this just a, an ongoing process that will just continue to improve? I think we'll see it continue quite rapidly, to be honest. So more and more devices are introducing a conversational interface where you can talk to the device and it will talk back to you. But they're also using artificial intelligence for other purposes. So if you think about, for example, the tail end of 2020, uh, Facebook and Amazon introducing devices like the Echo Show and the Facebook Portal. And these are video conferencing devices that have been designed to capitalize on the fact that everyone's doing everything online uh, for a long period, it seems. Um, and really what they will do is they'll use artificial intelligence to control, for example, the camera. So if you're in the kitchen and you're demonstrating how to make something or you're showing a technique, the camera will actually focus on you. And as you move, the camera will move with you. So there's no need for you to reposition or refocus your camera. It will actually do that and it will keep an eye on where you are and it will move with you. Now, people may find that a little bit creepy, but what they should be assured of is that in the cases that I've mentioned, the camera is actually controlled by artificial intelligence locally. So it's not from a server. It's actually on device AI that's focusing on you and following you around. Um, I have to say, as somebody who's low vision, I find that a very exciting prospect because I have no idea what the camera can see when I'm doing a, a virtual conference or I'm demoing something. I find it really difficult to refocus the camera. So that's a very welcome technology. Crucially, we're starting to see it appear you know, in sub 100 pound price point devices and the devices will only get cheaper. So more and more devices will use on-device AI um, and more and more devices will use a conversational interface as well. I think you will continue to see Google Assistant getting better and better and becoming more proactive. So it actually says, Stephen, I see that you're doing whatever tomorrow. Would you like me to find directions or ticket prices for you? It can actually be preemptively helping you to go about your day and to have a more inclusive, more efficient, safer, and hopefully more enjoyable life. And it's worth adding as well that, you know, those products mm. you've mentioned, the Echo Show, the mm. Facebook portal, all of those, uh, you know, they are accessible. They have accessibility they features are. built in. Which Absolutely. Is I think that's another thing that we're starting to see is a broader recognition of the need to, be, you know, to inbuild or to embed inclusive design features into all devices. We're not there yet. We've got a lot of work to do particularly yeah. in the domestic appliance arena. But, you know, there's a lot of work happening that recognizes that accessibility is just part of personalization. It's about making the visuals, making the audio features, making the haptics work for you in relation to your particular needs and your situation in life. And, it, you know, it's very much looking at this from the point of view of personalization rather than seeing it as being in a, a purely quote unquote accessibility bucket. Okay, before I let you go, I have to ask you about what you think will be the, the big tech of 2021. Something that isn't out yet, something that this year will be announced or will come along. 
I'm putting you on the spot. What's your top tech prediction for this year? I think we'll start to see some really cool things in the home. So I think in 2020, a lot more people have spent more time at home. A lot of us have begun to appreciate our homes and gardens maybe more than we ever have done. So I think we'll start to see home tech. So think about the things like the ring doorbell. Think about the appliances that you have perhaps in your kitchen. I think we'll see a lot more creativity and innovation in home appliances um, and, and more connectivity. So more ability to work home appliances from our smartphone and to integrate a whole suite of stuff together. Um, we'll probably see more robot vacuum cleaners and lawnmowers um, and those such devices as well. Um, yeah, I think one of the things I would love to see is a video conferencing device that's completely platform agnostic. So whether you happen to be using Facebook Messenger, you know, Amazon Chime, Teams, FaceTime, whatever, I'd love a device that could actually connect to all of them, but it could do that proactively. So when I finish my Teams call at two o'clock, it knows that I'm going on to a Zoom call next and it sets it all up for me in the background and I just seamlessly transition into the next call. And you know, I can't be alone. I can't be alone in wanting this. I think a lot of no. people right now must be thinking, I'd love that, Do you know, I'd love something that could have the infrastructure and capability to just be authenticated and be signed in to all of those services, but serve them up to you without the requirement for authentication or re-authentication or rebooting, God forbid. Um, yeah seamless completely seamless movement between video conferencing platforms bring it on sounds good love the suggestions uh, love your insight as well uh, robin it is always great to have you here on double tap tv come back soon uh, thank you so much for being with us robin spinks is the senior innovation manager at rnib in the uk you can find out more about what rnib does at rnib.org.uk and you can follow the work of robin as well you're on twitter aren't you robin I am indeed. It's at Robin Spinks. And uh, yeah, let me say it's been a pleasure, Stephen. Always enjoy uh, coming on and talking. And um, hopefully it's something that listeners and viewers have found, found useful. Absolutely, Robin. It's great to have you on as we have in the past. And uh, you know what, Stephen? We really do get the best guests right here on Double Tap TV, do we not? Guys, that's it for us this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope you're looking forward to a promising and positive 2021. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you guys for being here. We will see you on our next edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Aflalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.